vamos ahora a pasar a la presentación de Luis Poinciñón, pero no errarle. Eh, bueno, a él ya lo presentamos en el bloque anterior. Eh, Luis es francés y es ingeniero de software de Cloudflare. Y, bueno, ha estado mejorando la recopilación de, de flujos este, y de rutas de BGP. Las herramientas se utilizan actualmente para la inteligencia empresarial y la ingeniería de tráfico. Luis nos va a presentar una, un trabajo que se llama Route Leaks y RPKI, ejemplos de la vida real. Luis, go ahead. Hello again. Um, so I'm Louis. I work at Cloudflare. This is um, the follow-up of the previous presentation I gave an hour ago. It's more focused on RPKI. Um, the previous one was mostly about route leaks in general. And here, I'm going to show us the work that we did at Cloudflare to deploy RPKI and how you can do it with our tools and also how it could have been, could have fixed some route leaks recently. This is a short talk, so feel free, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, ask them. Um, RPKI is a complicated topic, so it's ask questions. So RPKI today, it's 22,907 ROA files. It's 12,000 certificates. It's nine async path, 10,000 ASN, 800, um, oh, sorry, on the internet there's 10,000 unique ASN, there's 900,000 unique prefixes. It's the equivalent of 300,000 aggregate signed, 500 million signed, uh, signed IPv4. So this is RPKI right now, this is what has been deployed. And for us, how did we deploy RPKI and how did it start? So a year ago, in 2018, there was a leak. There was a leak that was of Amazon and that we accepted. That means we send our traffic to the wrong address. We, we accepted the route and we sent the traffic. So there was an authority DNS route hijack in April 2018. It affected our DNS resolver. The route was sent to us on a Chicago peering session. So what, we should have, what should we have done? At the time, we had 150 point of presence, 26,000 BGP sessions, and we have the IP space in, the fi in five different regions. At the time, there was only one RPKI validator. It was the RIPES one. And we had how, even if you validate, how do you distribute the prefix list efficiently? Like I said, 150 pops all around the world. 26,000 BGP session, you, you have to apply those rules everywhere. You, you can't do it manually. So in July of 2018, we started deploying GoRTR. GoRTR is a tool that helps distributing um, prefixes, RPKI signed prefixes, so that your router can actually validate, filter them. We open sourced it in August. It was, we were rushed a bit by the time because it's a very urgent matter. We, we try to deploy as fast as we could, but still safely. From September to December, we turned up RTR sessions, which means exchanging the routes. And we also signed our prefixes. Like I said, five different regions, a thousand prefixes. The effect was how much traffic was affected by this enabling the filtering of those routes. There were many invalids actually, but it's very little traffic. And we still keep a default, so you can still be reachable, we just don't guarantee that it's gonna be the best path. Now, many ISPs are doing filtering, but they don't necessarily have a default, so you, can, you may actually lose um, access to some places, so that means that a hijack won't go through. So, in the effect, there was only one place that changed. A few gigabits per second was shifted from a pop to another, and it was just due to more specific, but this was fixed once we, we, we called the ISP and got it to fix it. So 
I'm going to talk about, uh, more about tooling. So how does GoRTR fit? GoRTR used to be plugged on Rive Validator. Now we have Octo RPKI, which is our new validator, which is the validator that we developed around February 2019. And we deployed it in production. It serves GoRTR. GoRTR serves the file to all our routers. And this is what it looks like when, like this is our deployment of RPKI. It's just two software plugged together that makes our internet more secure. We do have accounting, which is using flows, we saw how much traffic was valid, and there's really little, less, less like few megabits per second of like invalid traffic. So for us, it's just gonna be redirected eventually, or take a, more spe a less specific route, so it's still gonna be distributed. Um, other companies and other tools have included RPKI, so PMSCT can do filtering, uh, can do filtering, can tell you how much traffic you could filter, and Kentik also does it. Kentik's the cloud um, analysis of flow. The Cloudflare validator is available on this address. It's also a toolkit so that you can develop all around RPKI. You can decode files, you can troubleshoot, but there's also Octo RPKI, which is the validator. It's written in Golang. Um, this is a language that has a lot of cryptographic, a lot of community around and cryptography to, uh, libraries, and this is why we used it. GoRTR is the addendum. It fits with OctoRPKI and it fetch a, it fetch, it connects to OctoRPKI and distributes the list. OctoRPKI generates the prefix list, GoRTR fetch it and distribute it to the router. So you can deploy GoRTR and it's gonna be very little you can deploy it everywhere and connect to one OctoRPKI, which takes more compute resources. It's very simple to run. It runs in Docker. You can deploy it with this simple command line. Some people have even tried to run it natively on Juniper, and it worked. So we also developed, so in order to make it easy for everyone to test RPKI, because like I said, it's not a simple topic. In order to make it simple and allow people to try it, we, you can use GoRTR and it's gonna connect to Cloudflare and fetch all validated lists. The, it's like a JSON file. It's gonna fetch it and distribute it. You can also, so you can run without a validator and we just GoRTR. But you can also connect directly to a RTR server over SSH or plain text, depending on the capability of your router. But if that makes it easy, we, we hope that more people are gonna deploy RPKI. It gets simpler and simpler. You have less and less tools to install. You can just troubleshoot things. We also released the portal, rpki.cloudflare.com, in order for you to check the prefixes that you signed. We're gonna include BGP in it um, in order to see which of your prefixes are being filtered by Cloudflare based on what we receive from you. But at the moment, it only displays, you can only do validation based on some information, like the information you provide and write in it. Or you can see the row as you can, you can display the, the details of every certificate. So there's 70,000 row as unique prefixes that are signed and also, but you can see what are the actual cryptographic structure. So this is what is the impact of RPKI, and I'm gonna give back two examples. I'm gonna dive a bit more in like the examples um, that way it would have been useful. The Amazon route hijack, when the attacker uh, announced the prefixes, the prefixes were not signed. Cloudflare and Google accepted them in specific location because it was, it, it was announced on peering sessions and <coughs> Cloudflare and Google DNS started using this route over DNS. When people queried our DNS, we used the fake route. So we returned wrong results. Um, and the server that was returned was a phishing website. 
in the attack, gather credentials to steal bitcoins. So this is the effect of the route leak. This is a diagram that we published on a blog post. There's the resolver, that, that's the normal case. The resolver asks the authority on Amazon. And the, the authority returns the correct result and we return the result to the client. And it connects to the website. In the case when it got hijacked, there was another server that replied a wrong address. And that's how the phishing happened. So in summary, Amazon did not have signed, uh, have, have not had signed the routes at the time. So there was no way we, we knew that it was supposed to be Amazon. It was, it was a different S number at the end of the route. But there was nothing that would tell us that it was supposed to be this, that it was supposed to be Amazon. There was, Amazon signed the route after. And at the same time, neither Cloudflare or Google did RPKI validation. We did not do route filtering either on this. So we accepted the leak. And that was one of the easy ones because it had a wrong ASN. It was not Amazon. So we accepted the route because it was faster, because it, was, it seemed like the correct route. If RPKI would have been deployed at the time, the route would have been rejected because it just had the wrong origin. It was as simple as that. Now it would not work. The, the, our router that accepted the leak now has RPKI validation. Amazon signed the prefixes. It would not go through. Another recent Verizon route leak, the one that happened in June of 2019, is another example um, of why you should do filtering because it, it affected us, but we were on the other side. It's one of our prefixes that got leaked. The company had two internet access, Verizon and another ISP. The ISP had the BGP optimizer. The BGP optimizer fed more specific routes. Unfortunately, the ISP sends the routes to Verizon, which end up being accepted. And because it, they were not filtered, it re-announced them to its peer and clients. And Cloudflare lost traffic. This is what happened. The route from Cloudflare goes to a transit network, which is announced to the ISP, which the BGP optimizer divides. We announce a slash 20, and the IP is divided into slash 21, which is announced to the company, which re-announces it to Verizon. And since it's a more specific, there's no way the Cloudflare one could have taken over. The more specific, you, your routers will always choose the more specific. And it had the same ASN. It was just a longer AS path. It had the same ASN, but the length was different. We had signed this route, but Verizon did not filter. So you can sign the route as if nobody is filtering, it's not useful. So only a handful of players need to be filtering because the big players, if, if Verizon did not filter and many networks accepted the leak, that, that's what caused the issues. Any basic filtering, if any basic filtering would have been deployed, this would not have happened. You can just set a prefix threshold. You cut the BGP session if you receive too many prefixes compared to the usual. Our cl Cloudflare prefixes was not the only one to be announced. The S pass also, filtering on the S pass could have been helpful. It would have stopped being, like I said, it was the correct Cloudflare SN, even though the AS path was longer. If you filter on the AS path, you make sure that it's not a strange AS path that's coming to you. And if RPKI would have been deployed, as simple as that, the route would have been rejected because it's the wrong length. The ROA that we created was for slash 20, not a slash 21. We said the max length should be slash 20. That means any router seeing the slash 21, it's too long. It doesn't fit. This is why you should also be careful when you create your ROAs, when you sign your prefixes, put the S length that's gonna be the maximum size that you're gonna announce those prefixes. If you're only announcing a slash 20, do not put slash 21. 
So what we learned, RPK is not the solution to everything, but in all stories, filtering solves Amazon to be hijacked. Signing helps your network not being leaked. And if you just have like to remember one thing, so I, it's this slide again, but deploy RPK now, this is what happens when you're filtering and when you're not filtering. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions. Thanks, Luis. Tenemos alguna consulta en la sala? Carlitos. Hola, Carlos de LACNIC. No, en realidad no tengo una pregunta para Luis. En realidad esta presentación es súper interesante. Espero que, que la hayan incorporado, eh, que hayan incorporado lo grave que hay atrás de esto. Y en realidad lo que tengo es un llamado a la acción. Hagan sus ROAS. Los que no han hecho sus ROAS, hagan sus ROAS. ¿sí? No esperen más. O sea, ya no hay excusa para no hacerlos. Así que ese es un poco el aviso, el llamado a la acción. Hagan sus ROAS. Si necesitan ayuda, vayan al stand de LACNIC. Pregunten por Gerardo, por Guillermo, por mí. Los ayudamos a hacer los robots. ¿Sí? Gracias. Bueno, ningún comentario más. Thanks, Luis. Gracias. Thanks.